All right, Simon, so let's talk about spin, right? And players are obsessed with trying to get spin. And spin essentially is a product of two things, friction and speed. And the more that you have of those, the more the golf ball is going to spin. Yeah. Now, hitting into this pin, perfect example, right? I've hit two shots, careered them, by the way, to get there. Now, they checked up a little bit, but for me looking at that, I would actually not even rather see that. I would much rather see a high soft landing ball flight because that's predictable, isn't it? Versus if my ball lands a little bit short in the mid, lands on a different bit of undulation or grass, and then all of a sudden it spins more or less. It's quite frustrating. And you see it two players, like they hit these shots in and sometimes the spin is like, it's, it detracts from what they're wanted to achieve with their app. Mm. Traditionally, this part of the game is one of your strengths, right? And for the players at home that are looking to get spin, what is your recommendation from a nine times tour winner that has played all around the world on all different surfaces in the most difficult of conditions? What should they be trying to do with a shot such as this? First of all, it's all about consistency. If you can get a consistent flight and consistent spin, yeah. then you know what it's going to do on the green. Obviously, greens are all different. Some are nappy, some are spinny, some are rock hard like Lynx courses. But if you kind of get the gist of the ball flight you're going to get yeah, and the amount of spin you're going to get, like you say, people are obsessed with spin. It's a two in 10 shot mm. when you're trying to put too much spin on it. You played a worldie there, mm. but you could hit the next one and, <laughs> and it not get the spin and go 15 feet past. Correct. Because it's coming too fast. Very true. So for me, I like just showing, well, it comes down to fundamentals, mm. but it's about the consistency of a neutral ball flight with the same amount of spin each time. And then you can start gauging where you need to land it yeah. And how much he's going to release. Very true, mate. So uh, we will replay the shots that I just hit in regards to the flight that I had. Now, Simon, you've got a 54 degree wedge. Yeah, 54. 58, so I had a lot more loft, right? I want you to come in here. I want you to run through some of your setup keys uh, that you look for with the ability to control in the pursuit of controlling that ball flight, okay? So the first one for me is alignment. Mm -hmm. So many people aim left because they feel they want to cut across it yeah. and they want to put that spin on it. Mm -hmm. That's just putting side spin on it. And when you do cut across it, you talked about friction. Mm. You actually get less friction when it comes across yeah. the blade. Yeah. So, I mean, yours spun a little bit to the right, but not much. Mm -hmm. But if you were to put more spin on, you would then actually see the ball go higher with less spin because you're not getting the friction, like you say. Because it's, a, it's more of a deflecting blow. When you're absolutely, this, right? absolutely. So I want to feel like that ball is getting a center strike, but it's going more the up the face okay, as opposed to across it. That's a great visual, I think, in itself. And one thing I do also really like about the idea of that is if you're trying to get the ball rolling up the face, now the release of how we move the golf club through impact for a pitch shot is different yeah. than a full shot. Yeah but that is actually going to allow the club head to pass the hands a little bit more, which will give us a higher, softer landing ball. And that's what you want. You want the release of the club because that's when the bounce kicks in. Yeah. And that is what the bounce is for. Yeah. It's for shots like this, where you've got a nappy lie and it's into the grain. Yeah. And if you get that leading edge, if you aim left and then think, oh, I want to hit it a little bit lower and you do that and you catch it a centimeter early, your ball's finishing there. Oh yeah. So. For me, it's about alignment is the main focal point for me. So I just get my players aiming straight at the target. The target. Yeah. And do you know what? Even if it is a left to right breaking shot, yeah. I'll still get them aiming at the target, yeah. but then I get them to release it a little bit more. So it starts a little bit left of the flag and then goes. Okay, perfect. Well, so let's hit a couple of shots of you just doing that. So I have quite a narrow stance. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like I have my leaf, left foot flared out a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, I might even stand a little bit open with my shoulders, but I'm aiming pretty square onto the target, yeah? Yep. So then all I'm feeling is that my hands slow down, mm -hmm. which as soon as my hands slow down, that club speeds up, it releases, it uses the bounce, 
and then I get the flight that I want to get. Okay, let's hit one down. So if I'm going to aim dead straight, add a little bit of loft on it, and then just... Great. Good didn't result. quite strike it. Didn't but, quite strike it. That in itself, I think, is quite important. Uh, you know it was the right shot to play. Yeah. If you miss hit it and the outcome was still good. Yeah. For example, if you were here, you were trying to rip a high lobby with an open face, yeah. full swing, and you miss hit it. Yeah. We're over into the construction site. Absolutely. But that was a miss hit, widening the margin for error. So even if he got it yeah. wrong, it was still good. Let's go again. So let's go again. So again, quite nappy. So I'm just going to aim dead straight, add a little bit of loft, a little bit of bounce. There, that was better. And it's just, the good thing about aiming dead straight is you know if you've done it right. Because yeah. if you cut across it, it'll go right at the flag. Mm. If you've done it correct, it'll go straight down the line of the flag, which is what we're after. The, the thing about I love about this sign for the players is it just simplifies this whole process of hitting a shot, right? You don't need to aim left. You don't need to cut across it. You don't need to do anything no. fancy. Essentially, you're setting up here. You feel like your body is on top of each other. Right, you're standing close, you've got a narrow stance that helps you make more of a centered uh, pivot over the ball, which yep. allows for consistency of strike. And then you're just aiming at the target. Right? Absolutely. And I'm not I'm not rolling my right hand to manipulate the flight. I'm just waiting for that club to pass. That's one really important thing I just want to touch on. Yeah. Players are so obsessed about not decelerating into the ball. Yeah. But there is a big difference, guys, between decelerating <laughs> the handle. <laughs> and then the club head, right? We don't want to be dragging the hands into the ball. Since well, we do that, the, that fast, the faster your hands go, the slower the club head goes. Correct. Correct. So if you slow those hands down and just let it do that, yep. the club head is actually speeding up. So a, a, good, a good feeling for what you want to do is just hit a couple right-handed because then it automatically, it automatically passes you. Yeah. That's great for awareness. But what I like to get my players doing then is to train that same feeling with the lead wrist because okay. it's the lead wrist that wants to drag. Yeah, wants to drag so I want them to then slow that lead wrist down and hit that shot. Mm, perfect. So just doing one-handed <laughs> swings, guys, just getting a feeling of what it would be like, bring awareness to the club head passing the end of the handle as we make little swings back and through and then changing hands over to this front hand and getting that same sensation. Be okay with the weight of the club head. Allow that to come down, strike the ball and pass rather than you trying to manipulate the handle into the ball. So some great advice here, Simon. Let's hit one more down there. I wanna see a high, soft landing ball flight. He's aiming straight. He's set up, stacked on top of the ball. Let's see how this flight comes off. That, that is absolute money right there. Come on, go in. Yeah. Look, guys, incredible advice. Nine times tour winner Simon Dyson. This is exactly some actionable information you can put straight into your games that's going to help you shoot lower scores. Right, thank you so much. Brilliant.